meeting the target. Dark was the night and fearful the atmosphere. The howling of jackals faded into the weird laughter of unearthly beings. Flashes of lightning revealed ghastly faces. But King Vikram did not divert a bit. He climbed the ancient tree and brought down the corpse. However, as soon as he began crossing the desolate cremation ground with the corpse lying behind on his shoulder, the vampire that possessed the corpse observed. O King, even the ablest of personalities enroll the help of others to fulfill their missions. But it seems you are out to reach your goal all alone. I wonder if that is wise. Let me tell you the story of two brothers. One success was due to the other's help. Pay attention to my narration. O oh, king, that should give you some relief. The vampire went on. In days gone by, there was a prosperous town called Danyakatak, on the banks of the river Krishna. Vishnugupta, the richest merchant of the town, had a daughter called Kamala. She was well groomed and beautiful. Being the only child of Vishnugupta, she was to inherit her father's vast wealth. Priests and relatives brought many proposals for Kamala's marriage, but none of them satisfied Vishnugupta. In the same town lived Dev Sen. He hailed from a great family. His grandfather in his time was the most celebrated man in the kingdom. But the family had become poor. It was mainly because Dev Sen's father had given away all his wealth for charity. Vishnugupta's grandfather had been greatly helped by Dev Sen's grandfather. They traded together and Dev Sen's grandfather, being wiser and wealthier than Vishnugupta's grandfather, came to his help several times. But, with the family of Dev Sen falling into bad days, friendship between the two families had snapped. Vishnugupta now showed no concern for Dev Sen. Dev Sen had two sons, Narendra and Mahendra. Narendra was only one year older than Mahendra. The two brothers loved each other very much. At a time when the family was passing through a particularly bad period, the two brothers went to Dev Sen and said, Father, why don't you ask Vishnugupta to choose one of us for his son-in-law? The marriage would help us tide over our difficulties. It is for Vishnugupta who was indebted to my grandfather to put forward the proposal, not I. However, I have no objection to your meeting him with the proposal, said Dev Sen. The two brothers called on Vishnugupta and said, We understand that you are on the lookout for a suitable young man to marry Kamala. Why not choose one of us? Vishnugupta was not inclined to oblige either of the brothers. It was because he had an aversion for people who had become poor. Nevertheless, he respected Dev Sen's earlier position past and could not reject the proposal summarily. I have decided to give my daughter in marriage to only such a young man who has experience in handling commerce and business. You lack that quality, observed Vishnugupta, who was certain that his words would totally off out the two brothers. Sir, a wise man that you are, how can you say that we lack any quality without trying us? asked the brothers. Vishnugupta found himself rather concerned. However, he pulled out 2,000 rupees and gave a 1,000 each to the two brothers and said, He passes the test who can whip up a lakh out of a 1,000 in a year. Go and try your luck. The two brothers took leave of him. They went in two different directions, deciding to meet each other at the end of a year at a certain place. Vishnugupta was sure that the two brothers would fail to fulfill the condition. He had given away 2,000 rupees only to get out of the situation, and he did not prove wrong. At the end of the year, when the two brothers met at the appointed place, both looked sad. What's the position with you? asked Narendra, the elder brother. With hard but honest labor, I could make only 10,000 rupees, replied Mahendra. Don't feel discouraged. To change a thousand into ten thousand in a year is an excellent feat when I know that you could not have been dishonest, commented Narendra. Brother, what about you? asked Mahendra. Well, I have made ninety thousand, though not in quite an honest way, said Narendra. They stood in silence for a moment. Then Narendra gravely said, Mahendra, I have an order to pass on you. Promise that you shall obey it and never speak a word of it to anyone. I shall be responsible for what I am asking you to do. I promise to obey you, brother, uttered Mahendra. 
Take this 90,000. It will make a lakh with your 10,000. That should hit the goal, said Narendra. Mahendra stood speechless. Narendra patted him on his back, thrust the money into his pocket and said, I shall go back to my place of business and flourish again. This time honestly, don't worry. He then went away without giving Mahendra a chance to speak. Mahendra did as promised. Vishnugupta had to let him marry Kamala. The vampire paused for a moment and asked in a challenging tone, O oh king, wasn't Narendra more eligible to claim Kamala's hand since he had come nearer to the target in earning? Why did he sacrifice his claim? Answer me, O oh king, if you can. If you choose to keep silent, though you may know the answer, your head would roll off your shoulders. King Vikram answered without a moment's delay. Narendra knew that Vishnugupta had stipulated an impossible condition only to avoid them. In other words, Vishnugupta had not been honest in his conduct. That is why Narendra did not think it necessary to be honest in fulfilling the condition. He earned money through doubtful means. But face to face with Mahendra, when he understood that his brother had taken great pains in earning the money in an honest way, he was overwhelmed. He had already been dishonest. He did not mind being a little more so in securing a boon for his loving brother. He took the consequence of what he was doing upon himself. That shows his nobility. No sooner had the king concluded his answer than the vampire along with the corpse gave him the slip. Please like, share and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Do provide your feedback in the comment section below. Thanks for listening.